Hey guys, welcome back to G.I. Joe on the Tabletop. My name is Brad from the Cast Dice Podcast Network. Today we are going to talk about one of my absolute favorite G.I. Joe toys as a kid. We are talking about a vehicle that takes the very best of the 80s and rams it all into one vehicle. We are talking about gullwing doors. We are talking about bright neon colors. We are talking about rocket engines, miniguns, and more than anything else, we're talking about ramming up. Trans Am grill on that bad boy. Of course, we are talking about the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. And as a kid, I loved to play with this toy. It was iconic. It appeared in the comics. It appeared in the TV series. It was famous and notably so. It is fantastic. And today we are going to get into how you can put your own Thunder Machine on the tabletop when you are playing war games. Well, before we can talk about the Thunder Machine, I think it is important to talk about the Dreadnoughts first. Now, the Dreadnoughts first appeared in 1985 as sort of a subgroup uh, led by Zartan, who was the action figure that came out in 1984. Now, the Dreadnoughts, there were three of them to start with, are sort of anarchistic uh, miscreants, a biker gang, led by, of course, Zartan, which I said came out in 1984. But the original three Dreadnoughts themselves, of course, we had Ripper, we had uh, Buzzer, and we had Torch. Now, in 1985, due to the popularity of that range, uh, the Dreadnoughts were expanded, and we saw four more. Now, we saw Monkey Wrench, who looked like the other three traditional Dreadnoughts, and then we got two more color-changing figures. Um, we got Zartan's brother and sister, Zarana and Xandar, and then we got one more. Uh, a figure that would later have its name changed. Now, at the time of uh, when I got the toy in the 1980s, he was known as Thrasher, and he drove the Thunder Machine. Now, the Thunder Machine, as I said before, was a uh, dreadnought vehicle that was almost like a Frankenstein uh, kit bash of a ton of different things, um, sort of all put together. Very Mad Maxi. Uh, and if you look at Thrasher's action figure with his shoulder pads and everything else, he looked like a cross between. Um, Mel Gibson and Mad Max and the Road Warrior wrestlers, which were sort of Mad Maxy to start with. Um, now, of course, it had the Gullwing doors that were famous on so many famous sports cars during the 80s, notably the DeLorean. Uh, and as I mentioned, it had the front of a Trans Am. And here you have the blueprints for the Thunder Machine itself. You can see its characteristic miniguns, which are protected by the big roll cage on the front of the vehicle, which again has an even larger roll cage around the passenger compartment. Now, as a kid, I loved this because the go-wing doors opened and the little roof popped off. And if you wanted to have sort of a more um, demolition derby looking Thunder Machine, you just had to take the tops off. And that roll cage really did give the vehicle a really one-of-a-kind look that didn't look like many other vehicles in the G.I. Joe run other than possibly the Vamp at the time, which was another one of my favorites. Uh, now, what I always liked about this were the running boards along the side of the vehicles. Now, if you think about the original run of Dreadnoughts, that's the four iconic biker-looking guys, um, there are foot pegs for four models on the outside, two on each side, and then seats for two inside. And so when I was a kid, I always loved to think that Zartan was in the passenger seat, Thrasher was driving, and then you had Monkey Wrench, Thra uh, Ripper, Buzzer, and Torch on the, on the foot pegs. And that is typically how I played with the toy. And that is kind of how it is the box art later that we'll see later um, is depicted. Now, this thing gets around with a giant rocket engine, and the toy itself had these great big rubber tires that were a really nice feature because so many vehicles, of course, had those plastic tires. Now, the rubber vehicle tires were great. Uh, in the front, they actually rotated, which was a feature that was a lot of fun to play with. I love the police lights on top, the giant miniguns on the front, having been taken to see Predator in the theater, you know, ballpark around when this came out. I loved this thing. Now, if we look at the order of battle from Marvel Comics, we can see that this thing weighs about four tons and uh, it has a top speed of about 115 miles per hour, 55 uh, off-road. We can see that, you know, how far it drives. But I love that it's got, of course, the weaponry. Now, it's listed as having two 20-millimeter chain guns. Now, if we go back to the blueprints, those are identified as um, penetrator Gatling cannons. Now, again... 
we see the discrepancy like we did with the APC between um, what the f file card says on the Marvel Order of Battle and what the actual blueprints for the vehicle say. I think in this case it's pretty close um, because this doesn't say uh, the actual um, size of the munitions. Now, let's talk quickly about the engine. Now, if you look at this, the vehicle has two giant Gatling miniguns, as we just got finished talking about, on its front, where its engine would normally go. Now, that just leaves the thing on the back, which is a giant rocket engine. Now, I bring this up because when I talk about my version of the Thunder Machine in a little bit, it might look a little hinky, and I'll explain why. But before we get to that, let's move on. Um, now, I did like this little note that is in the order of battle that vehicles, this vehicle uses highly modified non-standard parts, which includes reactive armor and heavy duty four wheel drive. Now that is reflected about what you see on the blueprints but it really does draw an underline under the fact that there are no other G.I. Joe vehicles or Cobra vehicles like this. It is literally a one of a kind. No others were made. It is the one and only Thunder Machine. Now, the Thunder Machine shows up for the first time in Marvel Comics in issue 51, where it faces off against um, the newly introduced Havoc. Uh, and it is a great issue. Uh, it involves a lot of dueling between those two vehicles. And it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it as a read. Uh, and here we have the actual Thunder Machine toy. Now, as you can see, those foot pegs on the running boards on the side, and you can see the minigun on the front and the running boards um, and roll bars that I was talking about, the roof and all the other parts that come off. Now, if you look at my version, which I'm about to show you, You'll notice that I favor a very heavy cell shaded uh, method of painting windscreens. If you look at mine, you'll notice it's got a black, pure black windscreen. That's because if you look at the actual toy, there is no actual windscreen. Um, and as a kid, I wondered what that giant uh, red bubble that is in the middle of what would be the windscreen, if it had one, um, right above the armor plate that protects the driver and the passenger. I was wondering what that was. I thought it was poss possibly a light. Now, if I'd looked at the blueprint, I would have seen it's a target acquisition scanner, um, which is pretty high tech, I guess, if you're going to uh, have a Thunder Machine. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about my version. Now, that is my Thunder Machine toy from when I was a kid. It is currently residing at my parents' house in Boston. But next to it is the unfinished, um, very raw 3D print of uh, the Thunder Machine that I will that I converted and painted on the tabletop. Now here it is finished, and we're going to talk more about this with much better pictures in a minute. But that gives you a diff an idea of the scale that we're talking about. A lot of people have asked um, when I'm taking these vehicles, um, what do they actually look like next to the originals? Well, there you have it. There is the original Thunder Machine next to my 156 scale Thunder Machine um, to match my Cobra Army. Now, this is a close up. Now, a lot of people have asked what 3D pinching materials um, I endorse or I like to use. Um, I, I've said before, I like the resin. It, it's very crisp, um, much better detailing. But sometimes it is just when you get it, there are uh, mold lines, there are imperfections that just need a lot of work. Now, when you look at my finished Thunder Machine, I hope you'll see that I think it looks pretty good. But it did take a lot of work. I had to use the back of my hobby knife and to scrape off all the little texture marks from the 3D printing process. And though that took a little bit of time, you got to remember, the 3D printing process allows us to take toys that we literally can't, or figs that we literally can't get anywhere else, and to put them onto the tabletop. And so for me it's worth a little extra effort to get a good quality Thunder Machine on the table or heck, just any Thunder Machine at all. So now here we have my version of the Thunder Machine. Now, if you look at it carefully, you'll notice it's a few differences from the actual Thunder Machine toy. Now I did take the original mini guns that were 3D printed that came with this kit and I put them on and I really didn't like the look of them. Um, I just didn't think they were big enough or chunky enough and they did just, honestly didn't look dangerous enough for what I thought the Thunder Machine should have. So I actually got a couple of uh, mini guns from 
uh, a game called Gaslands. Um, a bunch of people make uh, different weapon systems that you can glue onto Hot Wheels cars. And so these <laughs> these mini guns I thought looked hilariously oversized when try when stuck to a Hot Wheels vehicle. But on this, I think is perfect. I, I think they are the perfect size side by side on the front of this. The detailing really brought it home for me. So yeah, those are there. Now you'll notice that I didn't put the front grill, um, the front cage on the front of my Thunder Machine. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, I tried building a couple out of wire and it just didn't look right. It looked it, won it looked wonky. It didn't look sturdy. It just looked like I'd made something out of paper clips, which honestly is exactly what I did. Um, so I used what was there, which was a, a guard, and I just extreme highlighted it to make it almost look like the cage that was on the front uh, that protected the miniguns. Um, and I think it works all right. Um, again, I just wanted to have a, a good quality Thunder Machine on the tabletop. And I think that by cheating and uh, painting in sort of the cage on a solid bit of 3D printing material got there in the end. Um, you also notice I added exhaust pipes. Now I did say earlier, the only engine that the Thunder Machine has is that one, the giant rocket booster on the back. And if you look at mine, you will see that I did ask, add exhaust pipes. Look, um, if you're gonna think about it too much, it's probably uh, not the, uh, the greatest idea for me to have done that, but I wanted to give the vehicle a, a hot rod feel and I want to add a little more detailing than the 3D printed vehicle had initially. Um, now, if you want to nitpick, if you think back to the original Thunder Machine toy, um, <laughs> under that rocket booster, there is a tow hook. I'm just saying, let's not throw stones. Now, if we also go back, you'll notice um, there's a yellow jerry can on the back. I added that, again, not like that engine is gonna use a jerry can. However, I wanted to add it on, um, I wanted to add on a little more detail and I was gonna add more stowage, but then I started covering things up and I realized that was really covering up too much of the Thunder Machine and you wouldn't get the, the impact of those giant armored plates. So I left it in. Uh, now, as you can see, I have painted in all of the lights using the cell shading that I talked about before. I believe it's called the jewel method um, to make it look more like jewels. Um, and I had a lot of fun because this vehicle had so many headlights. Um, and look, again, I'm happy with how it came out. Uh, now, if you're looking to put the Thunder Machine on the tabletop and to use it in game terms, uh, look, I would probably use it as a, a light armored car if we're talking about something to do with bolt action. Um, there's quite a few armored cars, depending on which nation you want to use to represent your forces. Um, I know the Japanese have quite a few excellent armored cars with uh, dual machine guns that work well for this. Um, the Italians do as well. Those, those tend to be... Uh, turret mounted. If you want something maybe with a little bit of armor plating, but is still open top, the Adler out of the German book uh, works well. Um, and if you want to actually get this model, um, I printed this, I believe, at 40%. Um, and, the, and the Thunder Machine file is on Thingiverse. So I highly recommend you go and check it out. There's some great stuff on there made by the same uh, creator um, that you can use to uh, represent on, on the tabletop if you are trying to make a G.I. Joe or Cobra army. Now, a lot of people have asked, Brad, you have the Thunder Machine. Um, they asked me this because I posted pictures, all the progress pictures when I was painting it online. But then they said, what are you using for Zartan and the Dreadnoughts? Well, here we have, there's Buzzer. And there is Zartan. Now I've only black primed these models so far, but I will be painting them in the next couple weeks. And they are from Footsor uh, Miniatures North America in their pulp range. I highly recommend you check them out. Um, there's the classic, it's a pack that comes with Ripper, Buzzer, Torch, and Zartan. It is perfect, uh, is the perfect addition if you wanna add your Thunder Machine and some of the iconic dreadnoughts to the tabletop. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second at the end of this video to talk about the future of what this channel will be doing. Um, I know that the event that I've been painting a lot of my G.I. Joe for, it has a high likelihood of being canceled given 
um, the spread of coronavirus across the world and the cancellation and shutdown of uh, lots of areas, uh, including Melbourne, Australia, which is where I live. Uh, I will continue to make these videos. I know I had a few people ask if the event gets canceled and I switch projects, which due to my uh, being an adult with attention deficit disorder is very likely. Um, I still have enough painted vehicles to make videos in this series for quite a while and I plan on it. I, I really do want to continue to make these. Um, the, fa the feedback from you guys has been fantastic. And speaking of which, if you have not found the Cast Dice podcast page on Facebook, please message there or uh, find us there and uh, hit a subscribe. Um, we do love to hear from you. Um, if you want to give us feedback on how we can improve these videos, or you can just click below and hit subscribe on YouTube, uh, and uh, I will reply. I'm still figuring out this YouTube medium, and I would love any feedback that you have so that I can improve the quality of both these videos uh, and give you the information that you want. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Without further ado, I will catch you later.